I work as an art director at um, uh, Deportivo, a PR, PR agency here in Stockholm. And um, we are specialized in doing impossible things. And we love APIs. We love APIs because APIs is like having your own MacGyver. First, they do a lot of the hard work. Second, they solve a lot of trick, tricky problems. And third, you can be very creative with them. And at Deportivo, we help our customers make experiences, services, and products that create real engagement. And our goal is always to create something that you will love and tell your friends and family about. And we do this by creating products based on insights, creative ideas, and of course, using technology. And at Deportivo, we often produce everything in-house. And at the start of every new project, we ask ourselves the question, what if? And to give you a glimpse of how this could look like, I'd like to show you a short behind the scenes video. This is us. Yeah. <laughs> and we made a Twitter address for crossing borders. And as you could see, we made the address using lead stripes uh, running across the address with, um, uh, with the ability to display Twitter messages. Uh, and with this, we made young people's voices heard in the big, biggest political event that takes place in Almedalen every year here in Sweden. And it looked like this. And behind this dress, we had roughly uh, 28 bloggers, plus everyone else, using the hashtag TwitterClanning. Uh, and they all provided content for, for our feed. And um, we built the dress uh, on the Arduino <coughs> platform that had a 3G shield accessing our API running on an, an internet server, which in return uh, served as, um, uh, as the, the content feeder for our dress. And this is the way we use APIs. And at Deportivo, uh, we consider APIs to be a part of the creative palette, uh, we used to say. We use them in different ways depending on the project, but always in a way that supports our ideas uh, as we once had text and images to support our ideas, we now have APIs. And with APIs, we get controlled environments uh, for our digital product, and we can send and provide information, the information we want to serve our specific purposes. And sometimes we create our own APIs as we did for this one. This was an app we did for Nordiska Museet. It's called Årets Dagar. And this was an app index in Nordic uh, traditions in which uh, you could learn more about why we celebrate certain Nordic traditions. For example, Midsummer, or in this case, Morten Goas. 
But alongside this app, we, we created an, an, uh, our own API that not only provided the, the information to the app, but also made each tradition interactive. And so the user could choose to celebrate the traditions together with others. And when celebrating a certain tradition, our API made it possible for you to see where everyone else uh, who was also celebrating were on a map. So our APIs help us connecting people. And we did the same when we created a Rebeat for Reb Rebtel. And with Rebeat, you can send your heartbeat to a loved one. And it looked something like this. Reptel, the world's second largest voiceover IP company, helps people talk more to their loved ones without spending a fortune. Their customers often live many miles apart, and showing a token of love to someone across continents is often difficult and expensive. Wouldn't it be much easier if the ones you love and miss were just a heartbeat away? We decided to turn that into a reality. To raise awareness and build a loving brand of Reptile, we made the world's first app for sending real heartbeats to the ones you love. The process was simple and intuitive. And of course, we released the app just in time for Valentine's Day. In just a couple of days, Rebeat had a media reach of more than 214 million. Reptile Rebeat. The ones you love and miss are just a heartbeat away. Lovely, isn't it? Um, but we're not always using, um, we're not always developing our own APIs. We are also using existing ones in our daily work, and we love using Facebook's different APIs. Uh, in our work with MTV, we helped launch the Catfish, Catfish the TV show. And in our campaign, we hid Steve Angelo from Swedish House Mafia somewhere on Facebook. And it looked something like this. Who is who on Facebook? Is this, for example, really Pete Bauman from Sydney? MTV asked us to launch a new show called Catfish, the TV show. The problem? We realized that a lot of people didn't have a clue that a catfish is someone hiding behind a false profile on Facebook. To explain the term and raise interest for the TV show, we decided to create our own catfish. And it had to be one attracting a lot of attention. May we present our catfish? Steve Angelo the famous DJ from Swedish House Mafia. We tucked Steve away behind a Facebook profile somewhere in the world. To participate, we had users answer questions about the TV show. And when they got things right, we gave them clues to find our catfish. Then we challenged people to use Facebook to find him. And the winner got to meet up with him live at his Miami gig. In return, we got people's full time and commitment. The campaign spread to 124 countries. The media reach was 87 million, and 97% of all articles and blog posts explained what a catfish is. Catch the Evangelo was the first major campaign to use Facebook's new graph search, and this was buzzed about by tech reporters from some of the largest tech blogs around. We reached 8 million people through Twitter alone. But what's even more important is that we explained the catfish term and created the world's biggest game of hide and seek along the way. So, with APIs, we can make our, our product social. And um, for Philips, we actually did um, just recently an app that will make you quit snoozing, of all things. Unsnooze the game. Uh, and then in this game, you challenge your Facebook friends uh, to get, get up in the morning without snoozing. Uh, and whoever snoozes, loses. Uh, and apart from using Facebook's ordinary API, the, in this way app, we actually use the, the new uh, score API. Uh, so you can keep track of your snooze scores. Uh, and 
if you're having a snooze habit, make sure to download this. It's, it's actually a really, really, really fun game. But we also love Twitter and Instagram. And using their APIs, we managed to make a global phenomena, phenomenon of our sweat machine that we made for UNICEF. And it looked something like this. In rich countries, we keep water running just to get it chilled. How can we grasp that 780 million people in the world lack access to clean drinking water? By using the ick factor. This idea is either really cool or really gross. How does drinking your own sweat sound to you? UNICEF has unveiled a machine that turns sweat into drinking water. UNICEF and Gothia Cup challenged us to create a clean water campaign. Here, kids unite from all over the world. They play football together, and they sweat together. We built the world's first sweat machine. Then we asked people to contribute their sweaty clothes, or take the dare to drink a glass. Sweat, turning to drinkable water, had an element of surprise. It was fun in a gross way, and it was engaging. Everyone seems to have an opinion on drinking sweat. Not tasty? Well, don't judge yet, because it could serve a very important purpose. The sweat machine quickly became a global phenomenon. We counted an earned media reach of more than a billion people. On Twitter alone, we reached 94 million people, close to a fifth of the total Twitter population. At Gothia Cup, we got more than 2,000 people from all over the world to drink purified sweat in one week. Every report about the machine highlighted that 780 million people lack access to clean water. According to UNICEF, it was one of the most successful campaigns for clean water in history. By using the ick factor in a way everybody could relate to, but nobody expected, we educated the whole world on the terrible water shortage. So we made a sweat machine, uh, and we often use APIs in our campaign work to spread our messages globally. And we did the same in a recent campaign, actually, uh, also for UNICEF. It's called uh, Escape Ends Here, or Flykten Slutar Här. this campaign, we put light on the situation of refugee children in Sweden. And for one week we projected moving silhouettes of children on fa facades and in various public places in Stockholm. And these projections reflect how these children live as shadows in our society. And the photos and films were spread on Instagram and uh, on YouTube. So as you can see, we use our APIs uh, daily. We use them in different ways, uh, depending on, on, on the project and the idea we have. And to, to sum up uh, what APIs means to us, they, they help us connecting people, they make our products social, they help us spread our messages, and along the process, we can be 
very creative and we can be safe, just like MacGyver. So thank you, and this is Deportivo. Arvid, that was an excellent talk. Thank the, you. The oh, fact you. that uh, APIs can help people get clean drinking water and children yeah. have a safe place to live energizes me. So yeah, thank you. Us as well. Thank you. Any, any questions or, or thoughts or reactions that the audience would like to share? Arvid, great. Oh, oh great. Excellent. Uh, in the end, how did you... Um, Get all the children running around. Running around. Yeah, yeah, in the city. Did you have projectors? Yes, or, we did. Or it was were you actually driving hard around work. in a car with projectors? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. It, actually, you, you see the, the fancy side of this. There's a lot of grunt work with all of, of these projects, of course, uh, but especially with uh, the escape and here. Uh, we, we had the children being filmed in a studio mm -hmm. and we made silhouettes of them. And uh, when we practiced it, we actually went out with, with a car and we had our generator with us and we projected the, uh, the images uh, on, on location and, and filled them there as well. And then we used snippets to just spread, spread as, as uh, films and, and images. Okay, so it wasn't for a long time you were around... For a, a week. Different pla for a week. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. actually a long time. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be... Being very reckless in the in the traffic, and <laughs> I see. Thank yeah. you. So, um, when you come up with these projects, where do you start? Do you start with looking at what APIs that are available, or do you start with what's the craziest thing we can do, or how do you actually get to to where you can actually to produce something? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Actually, uh, at Deportivo, we we we, we usually don't start at the crazy end. We, we start at the boring end. And we, <laughs> we get ourselves educated. And with every project that we make, we have, we have uh, long sittings with each other and with our clients. And we, we discuss what is your real problem and, and what can we actually do for you. And we base, and hopefully with this comes an insight and we base an, an idea on this insight. And then we we choose our creative palette from this idea. And with the, these examples that you've seen today, the palette has been very diverse and it's been, been uh, some, something that's been very new to, to us. And we, we, we've been creating APIs that we didn't think were possible. And we've been using existing APIs in ways that we didn't even think were possible either. The, the Catch Steve Angelo campaign that you saw was the first campaign to actually use Facebook graph search, for example. So when we do our campaigns, we, we get chills down our spines because we don't know how they will uh, react to a real life situation. Another question here? So in what aspect are you being safe then when you use an API? Sorry, again. In what aspect are you being safe then when you use an API? I didn't understand how it included into the whole safety of everything. That's a great question as well. Uh, when, uh, when creating the, the Årets Dagar, days, days of the Year app for Nordiska Museet, we, we actually built our own API just to make sure that all the data were uh, constricted within our, within our, in our boundaries. And the API actually serves as an engine for Nordisk Museet's website, so uh, as well as as the app. So when we use the word safe, we we talk about how data is working for us and us not working for the data. Uh, we can make uh, constricted environments where we control everything. You're not supposed to get anything else but what we what we we uh, decide. Great. Uh, another question, um, what, what percentage of your projects involve APIs? Uh, actually, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, I would say perhaps 85% uh, uh, of all our digital projects uh, involve some kind of API. And, 
And is that unique to you guys, or is that normal in your industry? I think we're, we're extreme. Uh, I, I think b because of the... the the, we, we used to say that we are grunts as well at Deportivo. We, we like to think creative, but we also have a tradition of working very deep in, in uh, C-sharp or HTML um, uh, and all these other, other platforms that makes, make our creative process that much easier. Uh, and that's why we also, in our spare time, we, we find a relief just uh, playing around with APIs and discovering new things. And, and just having fun. And that, in return, helped us create more uh, enjoyable experiences for our clients. Any more questions for Arvid? Last chance? Yep. Thank you. Good. Thank you. All right, then. Uh, it's coffee time. And uh, we'll be on a break till what time, Andreas? You got the schedule right there? 3.30. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.